What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm comparing two of the most popular sneakers of this year, the Nike React Element 55 and the Nike React Element 87. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't, not only to watch more videos, but also to learn more information about the upcoming Halloween giveaway. As of right now, what we'll be giving away is still kind of a surprise, so I'm not gonna let you guys in on that secret just yet. But if you guys would like to know more information about what it's gonna be and what kind of trails it's gonna blaze, that was so dumb. But if you guys wanna know more information about the giveaway and how to enter, make sure to subscribe, like I said, and also give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. But with all of that out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes of today's video. That didn't work. A couple months ago, Nike released a sneaker called the Nike React Element 87. This is one of the first pairs to drop. There were two colorways that actually came out at the same time. This one, the Sail colorway, and also a black and gray colorway. This shoe was kind of groundbreaking, not because it featured any new kind of crazy technology. Yes, it did have a full React midsole, but that had been seen on other sneakers like the Epic React. But the overall look and aesthetic of the silhouette really caught a lot of people's attention, and it just really made this shoe unbelievably popular and almost impossible to get. One of my favorite details about the shoe is that the upper of the sneaker is actually covered in this clear mesh so you can see right through to your socks or your feet but I'm kind of hoping if you're wearing this shoe you're wearing socks because I don't want to see your feet but the cool thing about that is that you could actually change the entire look of the upper by just changing the color of your socks the midsole cushion itself also did play a big part it's unbelievably comfortable it's definitely a rival to boost and having such a thick comfortable midsole on such an interesting looking shoe that a lot of people liked really made this shoe fly off shelves so just recently Nike released a budget version of the 87 that they made a lot more pairs of called the Nike React Element 55. Now you can definitely tell that the 55 and the 87 do look strikingly similar. Obviously the colorways are different but the overall shape of the shoe is almost exactly the same. But there are a few differences besides availability that set these two shoes apart. The first big difference between these two shoes is obviously the price. The Element 87 that came out a couple months ago retails for 160 bucks. Unfortunately you can't probably find a pair for retail so you're gonna have to pay resale. The Element 55 on the other hand retails for $130 so $30 cheaper than the Element 87, and it's a lot more widely available, so you can pretty much walk into any Foot Locker and find a pair in your size. Some people have been kind of frustrated about the release of the 55 because they feel like it's gonna sort of take away some of the hype from the 87. And I mean, I get that, that's fine. It's actually not a problem at all. In my opinion, it really gives the people who want an Element 87 the chance to grab the next best thing. But continuing on to the physical differences between these two shoes, let's continue on to the upper. As I mentioned before, the upper of the Element 87 is primarily covered in this thin translucent mesh. It's sort of stiff just so the front of the shoe can hold its shape. It is clear like I mentioned before, so you can see right through it. Obviously some colorways of the 87 have a slightly darker mesh, so it is a little bit harder to see through it. But with this particular sail colorway, I mean, it's completely clear. One of my favorite things about this upper is that it's unbelievably breathable. Because it's a mesh upper, it lets so much air into your foot and no matter how long you're wearing the shoe, your foot is really well ventilated. I also like that because it is clear, you can actually see through to some of the structural elements. That's just a cool touch in my opinion. I think overall this upper is just really clean. Unless you're not wearing socks, in which case then it's, it's not. Moving over to the Element 55, instead of your translucent mesh upper, you've actually got this really thin sort of nylon feeling fabric. This material is a little bit softer than that sort of plastic sticky mesh on the 87, which means I guess it is a little bit more comfortable because it moves with your foot a little bit easier. My main comfort problem with it though is that unlike the mesh, it's not really ventilated whatsoever, so this shoe does get very, very hot. And you'd think just because it's a thin fabric, it wouldn't get that hot, and maybe like in the winter it wouldn't, but like just walking around during the day, my foot got really, really warm. Something else that people may dislike or in some cases really like is that the upper of this shoe is completely opaque, which means you can't see through it at all. So if you have gross feet or your socks suck, then this is a good way to go. In my opinion, it definitely takes away from the unique aesthetic of the sneaker, but I can definitely see how this fabric material is cheaper than that thin sort of clear mesh. Another small detail that I noticed is that the swooshes on both shoes are actually different. On the Element 87, it's a printed swoosh right on the side of the mesh. And then on the 55, you've actually got a separate piece of material glued onto the upper. Is one swoosh application better than the other? Not at all, I just kind of prefer this one. Oh, also, it looks like they omitted the mini swoosh that's on the 87 from the 55. Not sure why they did that, but it's just not there. As you continue up on both shoes, you can see that the 87 has slightly nicer materials on pretty much every part of the upper. This small panel here around the bottom of the tongue is leather on the 87 and then sort of this weird nubuck on the 55s. You've got what looks like suede on the midfoot of the 87s and then faux suede or felt on the 55s. Not only that, but the laces that they use on the 87s are actually flat and have this kind of nice dot detail 
tail running down the center. And then on the 55s, you've just got these plain black rope laces, which aren't bad, they're just not as interesting. The tongue on the 87 is also a little bit nicer than the tongue on the 55. It's actually two pieces of material bonded together, so it's slightly stiffer and has a nicer shape. The 55's tongue is just this kind of like really flimsy piece of material and it doesn't really seem to do much. However, they do both have the Nike React printing and then this Nike swoosh pinwheel. The heel portion of each upper is pretty much identical. You have this small TPU heel clip on both sides. I've been calling that detail a heel counter, but on Nike's website, because it's so small, I think they call it a heel clip. So. That's just what I'm gonna be calling it. You've got the same suede detail on each shoe and then a pull tab right above it. And then of course, you've got that famous stitching detail on both sneakers, except on the 87. It's a lot more pronounced and actually is one of the biggest design details on the shoe. On the 55s, it just kind of blends in with the upper. It's not really pronounced at all. Inside each shoe, neither one has much padding to speak of. They're both definitely comfortable nonetheless, so it's not really that big of a deal. One notable change between the two shoes is that the Element 87 actually has a cork insole and the Element 55 just has a regular black insole. I'm not in love with the cork insole, so it's not a big deal to me that they removed it. I think it's just another cost saving measure. As for the fit of both shoes, this is where the 55 actually really shines. I have both of these shoes in my true size. However, the Element 87 doesn't really fit that great. They're both pretty narrow shoes, so that's something to think about. I have pretty narrow feet, so it's not a big deal for me. But one thing I noticed is that the Element 87 definitely fits a little bit big. If I had known that before I got the shoe, I probably would have gone down half a size because I do have some room in the toe. But it's not unwearable and it's definitely not uncomfortable. On the Element 55, on the other hand though, it seems like Nike really fix that fit problem and this shoe fits pretty much one to one. I don't know if it was the material change or they maybe shrunk the shoe a tiny tiny bit. I'm not sure what the deal was but this one fits great. So if you're grabbing the 87 maybe go down half a size if you have narrow feet. If you have wider feet maybe stay true to size. Honestly you should be okay going true to size but if you have the chance to try on the shoe first before you buy it make sure to do that to make sure the sizing is right for you. The Element 55 on the other hand is a lot less complicated. I would just say go true to size unless you have wide feet in which case go up half a size. Moving down to the cushion portion of each shoe, this is where each shoe is supposed to be exactly the same. And this is where I'm kind of torn. I've been wearing this shoe for like four or five days now and I've been wearing this shoe for a couple months. And even though both of these shoes have React midsoles and it looks like they were molded in the exact same mold, the 55 just feels ever so slightly more stiff. And I don't know why. Like it's a very slight difference. And at first I was thinking maybe it's just I've worn the 87 more so it's a little bit softer. But I actually just had a brand new pair of undercover React Element 87s and even those still felt softer than this. I could just be going crazy. I could just be imagining this is a little bit more stiff but let me know in the comment section if you have both of these shoes, which one you think is softer. Because at this point, I'm just not sure. As for the actual color, this black and teal colorway does look really nice on this sneaker. I think the same thing for the sale colorway. I think this white and translucent blue well now yellow, um, also looks really good with this upper. So aesthetically, the midsole and outsole are pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is obviously colorway. So I guess overall to round things up, both of these shoes, in my opinion, look great. I obviously prefer the 87s because I think the overall look is a little bit more interesting and a little bit more unique, but the 55s are still a great looking sneaker and they do fit a lot better. If you have to decide between the two, I think you really can't go wrong with either one. If your buying decision is based on budget, obviously the 55 is the way to go and it's a much easier shoe to find. If you're buying the shoe purely for height than the 87, no question. If you're buying the shoe purely for looks, then I would say either one is fine. Just grab a colorway that you like the best. But that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts on the Element 55 and the Element 87 and which shoe you like better. Of course, if you guys wanna know more information about the upcoming Halloween giveaway, make sure to subscribe because I will be dropping more information on this channel. And also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethBallard because I've been dropping hints there for the last week. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down below if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one.